To discuss money matters today, I have with me Mimi Parthasarthi. She is a managing director at Sinhasi Consultants Private Limited. She is joining us from Bangalore. Thank you so much, Mimi, for your time. Thank you so much, Ambika, for having me on this show. Since we are in the mid- amidst uh, these very challenging times, um, I'm sure those who have health issues but never took insurance uh, must be in a terrible spot. So when it comes to taking insurance, what advice do you have for people? What has happened with COVID-19 is we're seeing a lot of younger people actually possibly facing uh, unpleasantness with their health issues, you know. And therefore, it becomes very essential for us to have planned this a little earlier so that when we don't have any pre-existing diseases, as as it is called, it becomes cheaper and easier for us to get health insurance. And pre-existing diseases are primarily diabetes, uh, hypertension, which is high BP, uh, you know, cholesterol, etc. And over the past, I think, decade, maybe, you know, 15 years, we are seeing that this is no longer something that we're seeing in the slightly older people. We're actually seeing that our way of life has brought it into the younger people also. So I think it's a very important aspect that uh, anybody above the age of 25 must surely look into. All right. Now we have lots of questions. The first one is, uh, what percentage of my income should go towards rent, house loan, food, miscellaneous house expenditures, education, holiday, shopping, saving, and insurance? You know, as a rule of thumb, we actually talk about a 30, 30, 30, and a 10%, you know? So 30% of your money should go into savings. Another 30% of your money, uh, possibly into paying rent, paying an EMI if you've taken a, a home loan, and the other larger chunks of expenses. And 30% of your money is basically that you spend on your daily living expenses. And another 10% is possibly for that, um, you know, you can even think about an additional course that you'd like to take, some sort of an education you'd like to take, or a trip you'd like to take. You know, something on that, something that's fun and something that makes you uh, even more happy or enriches you even in terms of knowledge. The discipline of investing, whether you earn a small amount or a larger amount, it must start from your first salary. That is the only way you can inculcate it. We had a question, how much should one invest in uh, a SIP? What is the minimum amount and which SIPs would you recommend? The minimum amount for SIPs are anything between 100 rupees to 500 rupees. So there are two broad classifications of, of mutual funds, which are on the debt. By debt, I mean fixed income, which protects capital, which is more of a capital preservation uh, product without any guarantees. And on the other side is the equity mutual funds, which is about the growth, you know, capital growth. And there again, there is risk and reward and, you know, all of those kind of things. And we all must understand that investing in the stock markets or the equities is a function of patience, discipline and time. And that has to have a minimum time period of between five to seven years for you to make that money. So it's important for us to understand that these are the two asset classes. And once you understand what is it that you want your money to do for you, then you can accordingly allocate your SIPs between either the debt asset class or the equity asset class. Underscore Charm IP asks, Where do we park emergency funds and how much is enough? This question has specifically come up during this very challenging time of COVID-19, which we've experienced over the past one year, you know. Though we may not be going out to spend money, many uh, people have actually possibly lost their jobs or maybe a reduced uh, salary. They may be working on a reduced salary. So a lot of challenges have actually come up, hospital expenses, medical expenses, etc. And at the same time, fixed deposit rates are at one of the lowest in their history. You know, we are seeing fixed deposit rates between 5% and 6%. So possibly there's a cause for concern saying, my God, I'm just keeping my money in my bank at such a low rate of return. 
but that's the way it is and we must accept it and emergency funds are a must we must understand what are we you know what is the need for this emergency for example if we have household expenses i'm just giving a wild example of 25000 rupees a month and we might find that this particular time is a bit choppy and challenging for us we may we don't know how our job situation is going etc you know at least for 12 months we need to be able to manage right so we may need to keep an emergency fund for that 25000 into 12 months you know and, and by that time hopefully we'll find a better time so that you know our job situation etc could be fine we in between we may also have uh, medical challenges we may have children we may have elderly parents that are dependent on us so it's such a very individual uh, decision that one needs to make and must do a back of the envelope calculation saying you know these are the possibilities that may happen at a time like this and better to keep uh money safe and sound in a fixed deposit with one of the reputed banks so that you know you feel you have peace of mind because finally why are we doing all this all of this has to be finally done to have a sense of calm and a sense of peace of mind sorry how much emergency fund now how does one decide it depends on for example you, you, your monthly expenses may be 2 lakhs a month somebody else may have only 10000 rupees a month so you think 6 lakhs right. in 12 months i believe that we must keep at least uh, especially during this challenging time we must keep between 6 to 9 months if it's possible if it's possible so that you know we feel a sense of comfort because this too will pass us but we need to kind of keep ourselves prepared for the next 6 to 8 months the next question is how do i grow my savings which are sitting in the bank there are investment for capital protection and preservation and there are investments for capital growth and with capital growth comes two things risk and time so we need to understand whether you can put away this money for between 5 to 7 years for example the stock markets whether you like it or not the stock markets have become 50000 levels they started 40 years ago at 100 and they are at 50000 and if i look at it a year ago it was as low as 26700 so if we have time this too will grow and what is stock market returns stock market returns is gdp plus inflation so if we say gdp is expected in india on an average we can't take this is an aberration year let's say an average of 5 and a half percent and we take inflation at approximately 6% so equity returns should be 11.5% so anything between 10 to 15% depending on how well an equity fund is managed we should get this kind of return another risk related investment which is also having an up and down curve that we've seen is gold everybody has turned to gold and gold people turn to it when there is uh, economic fear so you will see a spurt in gold prices you know 2008 again now last year you saw a spike in gold but gold is again is corrected right it's come down from its levels of 52000 which it hit it's come down so what happens is gold over a 5 to 10 year period will give you plus let us say 2% over an fd so gold rate will give you around 8 to 9% equities 10 to 15% but this is all going to happen over a period of time that is important for us to understand 5 to 7 years real estate is another investment opportunity that is there again real estate is a very illiquid asset you can't sell it in a hurry but you can sell your shares and you can sell you know gold in the form of an exchange traded fund overnight you know you can just at a click of a button so what is important for us to understand is a little bit more about liquid versus illiquid asset classes understand that if i want my money to grow i need to be able to put it away for 5 to 7 years can you recommend any investment where there's a fixed amount given back every month for monthly expenses pension funds they are the best actually today and you have across all the all the insurance companies which uh, currently have pension funds like lic jeevan akshay 
they are all ranging between five to five and a half percent and uh, uh, taxable and uh, they will continue to give you pension as long as you live and you can also have a uh, option where your survivor can also continue the pension and upon demise you can also uh, you know the lump sum that you invest for the pension you can also have that as a um, as a the, it goes to the beneficiary of that particular pension plan so pension plans are rather uh, uh, popular in terms of uh, immediate income uh, opportunities even at any age you can do that pension plans are available only after the age of 58 okay all right not before Sad. because you know pension plans are meant for a particular age what about somebody if they're younger and they want uh, the the investment to be a source of income the suggestion for all young people is to work earn and then save and therefore and have a financial plan and invest for a longer time and one of the easiest ways of possibly investing is equity mutual funds you know over the past one year during COVID, I believe the statistics show that a million DMAT accounts and trading accounts have been opened every month. And the likes of Zero Dha and Upstock are singing all the way uh, in every way because they have just seen a boom in business, including all the banks who have a securities broking arm like ICICI securities and stuff like that. So what has happened is everybody's sitting at home because of work from home. And they are also saying that let's dabble in the stock markets. And you've got a lot of young investors who've come on board over the past one year. So keeping this in mind, of course, the stock markets continue to be at about 50,000 levels. But we know that the stock markets are never going to be linear. So what will happen is when we see the next correction, whatever the reason might be, Obviously, you will see that they have, they're going to experience a loss. But the only way to get used to investing in the stock markets for return is to experience it. Experience the highs and experience the lows. And only after you become uh, someone who's experienced this will you move from a trader to an investor and understand that the stock market involves an investment of more than five years. So that is how the younger generation or the people who've just entered the stock markets now will learn to move from trading to investing. And this is what we've seen right through, you know, uh, through the journey of the stock markets. Talking about the younger generation, uh, there's a lot of talk around millennials versus baby boomers or Gen X. How have their investment styles changed? Some believe in real estate, some don't. Uh, what does your research suggest? The next generation is always smarter than the previous one. So they figure it out faster. And this specific generation of millennials have also experienced COVID-19 which we didn't while we were growing up. So this is definitely a game changer for everybody. We were all taught that it's important that we own the house, right? And that is, you know, ghar to karidna. I think the millennials want to be free, you know, because paying up EMIs and, you know, getting stuck in one particular city is possibly not what everybody wants to do. So that is a huge shift. The second shift possibly is buying gold. I mean, we've been told for generations by our parents and grandparents that gold is a safe investment. I do believe the younger generation are seeing possibly gold maybe as an ornament, uh, as something, as a piece of jewelry. And uh, they are now turning into stock markets as an investment opportunity. And possibly, as you have also brought about cryptocurrencies and bitcoins as investment opportunities, which I'm sure Gen X will not even think of too much, you know, because it's uh, in the virtual world, we can't touch and feel it. You know, we're a very touch and feel generation. We like to touch the gold. We used to at one time, you know, literally physically hold our share certificates, right? And you can see the land or the homes that we buy. But virtual investing is something that uh, millennials are possibly comfortable with. And so there's obviously uh, going to be uh, a difference in style. And the evolution will tell us what is going to stay and what is not going to be there.
what do you suggest? Should one invest in uh, Bitcoin or Dogecoin? What I we always tell our investors, do what you know. Because, uh, you know, if you try to do something that you don't know and someone else is better at it and knows more about it, we may not know uh, what to do with it when things go wrong. Because nothing in life is linear. You're going to find the roller coaster ride in any investment that you make. You know, we don't want to be at the losing end ever, right? So keeping that in mind, we say that, you know, a generation of us are comfortable with equity, may be comfortable in investing in gold. And that has not given any lower return. It has given very good returns also, right? There may be a whole new generation that are comfortable with cryptocurrency and are okay adding it into their financial plans and taking that kind of risk because it has swung the most actually. So can your financial plan manage it? Can your heart manage it? Loss and money can you know, cause tremendous amount of emotion and can also cause ill health. So I think it's better that we stick to what we know best, especially during these very, very uncertain times. Since COVID-19 has been a game changer in every way, and there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty, it's better to stick with what we know rather than jump into something that we really don't know much about. Money is one of my favorite topics. Thank you so much, Mimi, uh, for your time and for all the information. Thank you so much, Ambika. Thank you so much for having me here. And um, as I keep saying, plan away with your money. And that's the best formula for success. Lovely. Thank you so much.